Splish Splash is an extremely underrated water park that I think is one of the best in the world. Located on Long Island, this park is a triple threat. It has great operations, a nice atmosphere, and one of the deepest lineups of water slides anywhere. Find out why this water park is an absolute must in this review. Splish Splash opened back in 1991. The park was originally built by the owners of Adventureland, which is the largest amusement park on Long Island. Unlike Adventureland, which is severely landlocked, Splish Splash has an abundance of land. It is one of the largest water parks in the world, spanning 96 acres. The park has a lot of potential, which is why it was purchased by Palace Entertainment in 1999. They have owned and operated the park ever since. Palace has continued to grow the park. You see some similar attractions to their other parks like Dragon's Den, but this park has so many unique slides such as the Bootleggers Run Water Coaster. Plus, you have one of the best settings for any water park. This is one of the most well-shaded water parks I've ever visited. Usually, you have to worry about getting burnt to a crisp, but not at Splish Splash. Most of the park and slides are located under a dense tree canopy. That also makes the pathways comfortable to walk on barefoot even on stifling hot days. Even from the top of the park's tallest slide towers, you can barely see any other attractions. There are just that many trees around you. The back section of the park is more open, and this unsurprisingly is where most of the park's newer attractions have been placed. But the slides back here still have covered queue lines, thankfully. But beyond the shade, this park looks really nice. Many slides feature bright and vibrant paint schemes, plus really cool logos. Now the attractions look run down at this park, and I was pleasantly surprised to find many of the park's recent additions even had some theming. You won't mistake this place for a Disney park, but you have some details and thematic structures in the queue line that put a smile on my face. Hollywood Stunt Rider even had an animatronic in the queue line. I was not expecting that. Then the park has also rethemed a few of the older slides in recent years. Splash Landing was one of the original tube slides, and it was transformed into Dinosaur Falls. You have some Jurassic Park theming in the queue, and multiple dinosaurs you pass during the ride itself. For 2022, the park converted the Abyss tube slides into Hyperlight, which is a multi-sensory experience with music and lights now. By improving their oldest attractions while also adding new rides, Splish Splash is a very strong lineup of attractions top to bottom. I'm struggling to think of many parks that can match this park's depth. As a result, you do need to pay quite a bit to enter, but it's warranted. Daily admission costs $70 at the gate, but you can save $10 to $15 if you buy in advance online. You also need to pay $25 to park. Or you can purchase a season pass, especially because the top ones offer free parking. I visited with a Palace Platinum Pass that also gets me into their other properties like Lake Compounds and Storyland. And if you buy a Platinum Pass with Splish Splash as your home park, you get free locker rentals, which is a really cool perk I wish more parks offered because lockers cost $10 to $20 depending on the size. Speaking of which, you have two banks of lockers, one at the front of the park by the entrance and one up the hill by the Kahuna Bay Wave Pool. I recommend using the latter. They're in a more central location if you need access to your stuff during the day, and it's way less crowded. This park does get pretty crowded if the forecast is nice. I was a bit nervous visiting for the first time on a sunny Saturday, but this park handles crowds about as well as any water park. It certainly helps they have so many slides to absorb people, but they dispatch people like an assembly line. On many water slides, they'd send the next party the second the prior one hit the final pool. The park had plenty of staffing on each attraction, and there were no shortage of rafts either. Many of the family raft slides had nearly a dozen on the conveyor belt at once, so there was always one ready to load. The staff also managed to be friendly while maintaining that level of efficiency. Many employees were playfully splashing guests whenever a slide started. It was a nice touch. Most lines were manageable. The body slides were near walk-ons most of the day. The tube and raft slides had their lines split into two parts. There was a section at the bottom of the tower, and then the slide tower itself. The employees let roughly 10-15 to 15 minutes worth of people onto the slide towers at once. For the one to two person tube slides, you needed to wait by the splashdown pool for a raft before heading up the tower. These slides have separate queue lines for single or double tubes, and sometimes one line is noticeably shorter. Once you grab your tube, you usually only have to wait another 10-15 to 15 minutes at most. 
The one exception is Dragon's Den, which took double that once we got our tube. The lines are set up in this manner to maximize the effectiveness of the H2 Ghost Skip the Line Pass. This costs an extra $50 to $120 per day, depending which tier you purchase. If you buy this, you can skip the line at the base of the tower. This only seemed to save a significant chunk of time for three slides. Alien Invasion, Dr. Von Dark's Tunnel of Terror, and Bootlegger's Run are the park's three most popular attractions and can garner waits around 45 to 60 minutes midday. You can avoid long waits for these attractions if you arrive at opening and knock some of them out. I recommend starting with Bootlegger's Run. This water coaster is the park's best attraction and its location in the very back of the park should allow you to experience it multiple times with minimal weight. I would then hit Alien Invasion because it's relatively close by and it's the park's second most popular attraction. If you're lucky, you'll still have minimal weights when you hit Dragon's Den and Dr. Von Dark. Although you can comfortably hit the major slides in a half day if you arrive at opening, I would recommend a full day at this park. There's so much to do here, and most slides will give you a reason why you'll want to re-ride them later in the day. Now let's talk about that slide lineup. This park really has something for everyone. The large raft slides are the most exciting attractions. Just note you need at least two people to experience these rides. Bootlegger's Run was the main reason I wanted to visit the park and did not disappoint. This Pro Slide Hydromagnetic Water Coaster features three drops. The first is one of the best on any water slide. It's tall and steep, offering some freaky floater airtime. Then the LIM uphill ascents are smooth and swift, allowing the slide to maintain its pace. I have an entire review in this attraction, but it's an above average water coaster. Alien Invasion is a Pro Slide Tornado. The ride looks downright imposing. It was brilliantly positioned so the giant funnel is facing the midway. You just hear the screams of riders echoing as you walk towards it. The main drop is great, especially if you take it sideways or in reverse. It's steep and offers a little airtime. Then you get some weightlessness rocking back and forth in that funnel. I admittedly skipped Dr. Von Dark's Tunnel of Terror at Splish Splash because I've ridden an exact clone of this attraction at one of Palace's sister parks in Water Country, and it was the worst water slide I've ever experienced. While the pitch black spiral and mini funnel sound cool on paper, the rapid transition led to me violently smacking heads with my riding buddy. I'd say maybe I got a bad ride, but my fiance's family had the exact same issue as well on a different visit. If this one is better, let me know down in the comments. Hollywood Stunt Rider is another dark raft slide. This one is pretty short, but you rapidly build up speed for a double down. If you have a heavier raft, you can get some shocking airtime on that final drop. It was one of my favorite rides in the park. Mammoth River is a long family raft slide. This one is located on the hill at the center of the park, like many of the park's older rides, and you methodically wind your way down it. You have some small dips, but the best part about this slide are the directional changes which can cause a heavier raft to slide pretty darn high up the side of the slide. For tube slides, you have three options. Dragon's Den is the bowl slide. This one requires you to ride in pairs, which is a policy found at other palace properties too. The initial descent is long, which builds up good speed as you enter the toilet bowl. I love that wild first lap. Then you calmly spin in a circle around that water-breathing dragon statue in the middle. Hyperlay is the recently rethemed duo of tube slides. The lights and music give the attraction a club-like atmosphere, which transforms a decent slide into an above average one. Both slides have a series of small dips and tight turns, but I recommend the right side for the wilder ride because there's this S-bend towards the end that really made the raft sway. Dinosaur Falls is a trio of tube slides by the main entrance. Depending if you're in a single or double tube, you get two different experiences. Single tubes tend to spin during the descent due to the wide trough, so you often find yourself going backwards at points. Double tubes hold more speed and really head up some of the turns. Then everyone can appreciate the dinosaur statues added along the windy course. The lone mat slide is Riptide Racer, which is your standard mat racing slide. It's an off-the-shelf layout found at many other parks. This attraction shares a tower with Bombs Away. This is the park's most thrilling attraction. This trapdoor body slide features a short but exhilarating initial plunge as the floor falls out. You get a nice but brief freefall sensation. Then you head around a 360 degree spiral. The green side seems tighter and has more force to it, 
but both sides are smooth and fast. Across the park are some other speed slides. Barrier Reef is a steep 360 degree spiral. You gain a considerable amount of speed, so you get some G's by the end of the helix. Then the splashdown is ultra disorienting because you shoot through this waterfall and skim across the surface of the water. Max Tracks is a duo of five story tall speed slides. The blue slide is the better of the two. You have three dips on the way down the tower. You get no airtime here, but it's fast and reasonably smooth. The red side has a larger initial drop, but it's pretty shallow for a speed slide, and the pullout is pretty bumpy on your back. Shotgun Falls is a short slide, the shortest in the park. The slide itself is over in about 3 seconds and doesn't have too much thrills. The real thrill is when the slide ends in midair and you're launched into a 10 foot pool, which is a rare sensation to get in a water slide. It feels like you're falling, because you are. Make sure you can swim for this one. The final major slide is Giant Twister, which are three serpentine body slides. The course has some small dips and fun turns. Then if you ride on the right side, you get a fun double down at the end before hitting the pool. Kids benefit by many slides having just a 36 to 42 inch height requirement, but there are some areas designed specifically for them. Two of the better ones I saw were Pirate's Cove, which allows kids to climb on a ship with some slides and sprayers. Then Soak City is a miniature action river nestled among the trees. It looked really cute. Adults who want to relax have a long lazy river. The first section is set up like your typical lazy river, and it's pretty shady, but the second half is awkwardly wide as you're in the straightaway that looks more like a pool. You coast through this section so slowly that many people had to propel themselves through it, otherwise they'd stall out. One other thing I noticed was that this ride had a dedicated queue line, so it is possible you may have to wait for it at points during the day, which is weird to see for a lazy river. The park also features two different wave pools on the opposite ends of the park. Surf City only opens on busy days if the park has enough staff, but Kahuna Bay is open regularly. Both produce a flurry of small waves after an alarm goes off. For food, you have a few options scattered about the park. My top choice is Johnny Rockets. It's a fast food joint with quick service, and it's by the back lockers and lounge chairs. Food is about on par with other theme parks in terms of pricing, but I was pleasantly surprised how short the food lines were compared to most parks across the board. So do I recommend Splish Splash? I sure do. I think this is the best outdoor water park in the Northeast. This park's setting, operations, and extensive slide lineup make it a standout for the genre. The amount of quality attractions here really make this water park one worth experiencing. I'd take this over most theme parks in the Northeast to be honest. I know Long Island is a little annoying to visit given its location and propensity for traffic, but Splish Splash is worth it. It is a must if you're a water park fan, and it's easily the best attraction on Long Island. So those are my thoughts on Splish Splash, the massive water park in New York. What are your thoughts on this place? Do you agree it's one of the best water parks out there? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.